everyone, and welcome to this tutorial series for Construct 3. We will be learning and using many aspects of Construct 3, as well as some new features like the tile movement behavior and the new built-in functions. One thing to note up front, I'm using a paid version of Construct 3, and this project will unfortunately go over the limit for the free version as well as use some features that are only available in the paid version. I apologize, but there are plenty of tutorials out there focusing on creating games with the free version limitations, but there are still plenty of tips and techniques that can be useful even if you can't follow along exactly. I just wanted that to be clear from the very beginning. My goal for this game that I have lovingly called Rock Smacker is that you will be able to take the end product and expand it to create a game of your own. So what are we making? Let's hop in and have a look. Starting here on the menu, we have three very simple options. We can play, make the game full screen, and mute the audio. As the latter two are pretty self-explanatory, let's hit the play button and jump on in. The main game mechanic for Rock Smacker is the tile movement behavior, which creates movement on a grid similar to old 8-bit RPGs. Now, we're not creating an RPG, but a puzzle game, but the movement is still very much applicable. As you can see, the player has the ability to move and attack. We will learn how to implement information signs that can display any message to the player when they stand in front of it. Attacking a bush will destroy it, allowing you and other objects to pass through. The main puzzle element of the game are these movable rocks. They have a white color, and if you attack them, uh, smack them, they will move until they hit another obstacle. Move rocks are also able to fill holes in the ground, allowing you to pass through an area that was previously impassable. We will also be making a screen-scrolling camera, similar to The Legend of Zelda. If the player incorrectly moves the rocks and is unable to finish the puzzle, it can be restarted simply by attacking the reset sign. The reset sign works like a checkpoint of sorts. It resets the level, but keeps the player in their current location. When the player completes the level by attacking the chest, the screen fades to black, and they are taken to the next level. This demo is available to play around with to get an idea of the project as well as all the assets used. Links are in the description. There's a lot that can be done with these base mechanics, and I've tried to set the project up in a way that makes designing puzzles very easy. Well, placing the objects is very easy. Designing the puzzles can still be difficult. So let's go ahead and take a look at the assets we're going to need. We will be using free art and sound packs available on itch.io. These creators have been kind enough to make their work available for others to use in games for free. Be sure to give them a follow and always credit. Again, links to these packs are in the description. The main pack we'll be using is Tiny Adventure Pack by Vriel. Apologies if I pronounced that incorrectly. This is a great pack, and a large reason for making this tutorial was that I wanted to use these assets in a project. Plus, if you want to continue and make a larger game, this creator has other asset packs in the same style for very cheap. Next up, we'll be using a couple of effects out of FX Pixel Art Pack 01 by Hugis Laborde. This pack has some really fun effects that will add a little extra touch to the game. I'm going to butcher this pronunciation as well, but the sprite font we will be using is Wayholmir, which is made by Just Frederick. For music, we will grab Minimalist Loops, created by Goose Ninja. And last, but certainly not least, we will be using the 8-bit sound pack by Dane Reed 1024 aka Sounds by Dane. And that is everything for this first episode. I'm not a fan of tutorials jumping into a project without showing you what they are making, so I hope you enjoyed this overview of the game and the assets we will need. Go ahead, download these packs, put them in a folder on your desktop or wherever works for you, and in part two we will get to building. Please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future installments, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or hit me up on Twitter. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.